Hi class, I hope you're having a great day today. I am here to talk about the poet Stevie Smith and her poem from 19, ah, what year is it again? 1953, Not Waving But Drowning. And I have to say, this is probably one of my all-time favorite poems. So I'm excited to talk about it with you, and I'm hoping that you enjoy reading it. Okay, so let me go ahead and start by sharing my screen so that I can uh, talk a little bit about the author with her pictures and everything up on the screen. So let me go ahead and pull that up. So there you, there you go. You can see there she is, Stevie Smith. Now, maybe you, you saw the name Stevie Smith and you assumed it was a man. Actually, no, it's not a man. It's a woman, right? So um, her given name is Florence. When she was born, her parents named her Florence Margaret Smith. Um, she didn't really like the name Florence. And she, as a child, people started to call her Stevie because she was kind of short, like petite. And at the time in England, there was a, a jockey, right? Jockey, the people that ride horses, right? That was named Stevie, very popular jockey. And jockeys are typically short. And so for some reason, they started calling her that and she liked the name. So she, you know, kept that name. She used that throughout her life. I'm sure as a woman, a woman writing, maybe it gave her a little bit of a freedom, right? People maybe assumed it was a man, but it isn't. Um, she's British, right? So um, she was born in Hull, Yorkshire, England. And when she was only two years old, her father abandoned the family. When she was three years old, her mother, her sister, right? And, and she moved in with an aunt. And interestingly, she stayed living with that aunt because her mom sadly died when she was 16 years old, right? But her mom had been very sick from the time that Stevie Smith was five years old. So again, like she lived with her aunt, right? And her sister, right? So very much like a family of women, right? Her mother, her aunt, her sister, um, all living together. Also interesting is the fact that when Stevie Smith was five years old, she had tuberculosis, right? And so she actually lived for three years in a sanitarium, right? Recovering from that tuberculosis, right? So a lot of her poetry, you can see one a theme that comes up is a preoccupation with death. Um, and obviously that, you know, probably had something to do with her mother dying, right? Her, her own tuberculosis, um, also interesting about Stevie Smith, and let me go on to the other pictures of her, right, is that in addition to being an amazing poet, right, who's published volumes of poetry and also published novels, she had a full-time career as a secretary. So she worked as a secretary at a publishing company from 1923 to 1953. So that was primarily how she made money and paid her bills, right? Also interesting about Stevie Smith, is that, you know, given the time period that she lived in, when women were expected to get married, you know, have children, raise a family, Stevie Smith chose not to do that. So she never married, right? She never had any children. As I said, she lived with her aunt for most of her life, right? And worked, you know, for 30 years as a secretary. So though she did have relationships, right, with men, she she chose to to not to marry, right, which is a decision I can totally respect. Um, sadly, she died of a brain tumor. So that's that was her cause of death. Um, you can see like some more pictures of her, right, a uh, picture of her biography, um, and then also right some of her her books, right? So Me Again, uh, The Uncollected Writings of Stevie Smith, A Good Time Was Had by All, The Holiday, right? The novel on yellow paper. And maybe one thing you're noticing from these, you know, these books I have on the screen, the, the covers are very unique and you can probably see this pattern, right? These, these sort of childlike drawings. And I'm just holding in my hand, right? My own collection of the new selected poems of Stevie Smith. And I wish you could see, right? I don't. I'm not sure how clear this shows up on the on the Zoom here, 
Right, but Stevie Smith drew illustrations for her works of poetry. And so I'm just pulling up on my screen. This is the, the poem that we'll be talking about, not waving, but drowning. And I realize it's kind of hard to see. I couldn't find this online, right? This is the illustration that she drew to accompany this poem, which I feel like hmm, kind of interesting. Um, I really like these illustrations. I, I, I do feel like these, you know, pen, these like pencil sketches they, they do seem kind of childlike, right? And, and I feel like that is sort of like a tone that I pick up on in a lot of her works. So here are more of, of the uh, her, her her collections. I don't know why it's going backwards. Okay, here we go. Yeah, interestingly also um, there was a play right, made about her life and her works that came out in 1977. Um, and then also there was a film, right, the play was made into a film in 1978. So, um, you know, I, 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 I'm not going to play this if you're interested, right, you can actually watch the film, believe it or not, on YouTube, right, I guess we can find everything these days on YouTube. Um, but, it, you know, you you might check it out if you're interested in learning more about Stevie Smith. It's very interesting. You know, it's really just about her interacting with her aunt. There's a lot of humor in it. Um, anyway, you might you might want to check it out. OK, let's turn to the poem. I'm going to pull the poem on the screen. And um, I'm going to just go ahead and read the poem one time. And then I'll go through and talk about, right, the things that really stand out to me in this amazing poem. So the title, Not Waving But Drowning. Nobody heard him, the dead man, but still he lay moaning. I was much further out than you thought, and not waving but drowning. Poor chap, he always loved larking, and now he's dead. It must have been too cold for him. His heart gave way, they said. Oh, no, no, no. It was too cold always. Still, the dead one lay moaning. I was much too far out all my life and not waving but drowning. Okay, so that's the whole poem. And we have these three stanzas. Okay, so let's kind of go through stanza by stanza and talk about what is important here, right? So much to say about this poem. I'm going to try to be as brief as I can. Um, I'm going to come back to the title, right? Uh, let's just start with this first stanza, okay? So we can see this is another example of a poem that is written in free verse, right? Again, that is a poetry without a fixed metrical pattern and without a rhyme pattern. Okay, so free verse. So this, we, we start and we're kind of like, okay, what's the point of view? Right? The point of view, I feel like is very important in this poem because we start off in the third person, this objective narrator, right? Describing this dead man. Nobody heard him, the dead man, but still he lay moaning, Okay, well, my first thought is, okay, wait a second. If this guy is dead, why is he moaning? Okay, so that's kind of like a red flag right there. It gives me some insight about this dead man, right? And then line three, all of a sudden, right, we saw that colon at the end of line two, and then we switch to the first person, which is kind of unusual, right, to switch like that. And I, I was much further out than you thought, and not waving, but drowning. Okay, so who is this I? Well, it kind of seems like it's the dead man. Right? And then he's giving us some insight about his position, right? That he's much further out, right? And then that reference to the title and not waving, but drowning. Okay, so let's just think about this image for a moment, right? If somebody's out in the water, right? And I say water because drowning, often we think of someone's in the water, right? Right. And they're not waving like, hi, having a great time out here, right? They're actually drowning. Like, oh, help me. Okay. So this idea of missed communication, right? That the person is actually trying to indicate that they need help. I'm drowning, right? But that the people observing this person, they believe that that gesture is just like waving. Oh, hi, how's it going? Water's great. Okay, so that's our first stanza. 
okay, right? The voice of the dead man in contrast to the, these people observing the dead man, okay? Now, the second stanza, we go back to third person, right? Again, these people, this objective outside narrator describing this man, poor chap, he always loved larking. Okay, so now we get some insight about this dead man, right? So chap, you know, again, Stevie Smith is a British writer. Chap is a word that British people use, kind of like the way we might say dude or guy, poor guy, right? He always loved larking, right? And we can see that this website actually kind of cool gives us like larking, again, a kind of a British term that means playing tricks, kidding, fooling around. Okay, so we get some insight that this guy is kind of like a jokester. Right. He's the kind of person who likes to prank, you know, have pranks, pull pranks, like joke around with people, you know, kind of like the life of the party kind of guy. Right. And now he's dead. OK, so we're kind of like, oh, you know, this is kind of shocking. OK. And then that long run on sentence, like the longest line of the poem, when you read it out loud, it kind of leaves you breathless. It must have been too cold for him. His heart gave way. Okay. And I kind of read that as these people, they're busy, right? They're just kind of explaining this away. Yeah, it's too cold for him. They blame it on the cold water. That's why his heart gave away. Okay. So they're just like, you know, eager to explain what happened to him and be done with it. Doesn't affect me. You know, he, he's dead. His problem it was the water, cold water's fault. Okay, so we kind of see that possibly, right, you know, they are mistaking his pain, his struggle for something else, right? You know, so um, again, nobody heard him. Nobody really understood his gesture, his cries for help, okay? And I also feel like this idea of it must have been too cold for him, right? I think that word cold is significant, right? Cold. Um, right, that that maybe it wasn't just the water that was too cold. Maybe it was just his relationships with the world, right? It was cold. Sometimes we use that word cold to describe a person who's uncaring, you know. And so maybe that's why his heart gave way. And also his heart, right? We think of our heart as being sort of symbolic of our emotions, right? Our feelings, right? We say, oh, people wear their heart on their sleeve, right? That it was his heart that gave way. Okay, again, then this is the people explaining it away. Okay, then we get to that last stanza. And now I believe we return to the first person. Oh, no, no, no. It was too cold always. Okay, now that I think is very striking to me. Because the dead man is saying, this wasn't just a one-time thing. This was a chronic issue. And it was too cold always. Right? So we get the sense that this, this dead man has struggled with despair, with depression, with being misunderstood for a long time. Right? Always. You know, and I love that line in parentheses. Still the dead one lay moaning. Okay, third person. And then we go back to the, the, the last two lines, right? First person, I was much too far out all my life. Again, this idea that this was a chronic thing. This happened for his whole life, right? That he was not waving, but drowning. So again, emphasizing that experience of being misunderstood. And I feel like that's the theme of the poem, right? Being misunderstood. Right. People assume that you're just having a good old time. Right. Because you're the kind of person who loves larking. You're the life of the party, always cracking jokes and, in a, you know, happy. But really, inside, you're struggling. You're suffering. Okay. And I feel like that, again, is this 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 message that she's trying to convey. Right. This tragedy that these observers who might have offered help but they were unable to interpret his gesture, okay? So this death, again, this dead man who's moaning, you know, not really dead, it seems, he's talking, but so we can maybe view this as a metaphorical death, right? And, you know, I believe we could view it as depression, 
right? That he he's not really dead, physically dead. He's sort of like emotionally dead, right? Sometimes we, you hear the phrase, I say this sometimes, I feel dead inside, right? What does that mean? I feel awful. I feel depressed. I feel misunderstood. I feel ignored, right? And it seems as though that's what, how this person feels, right? So this poem, I think, illustrates something very interesting about point of view, right? We see the, the difficulty sometimes posed by different points of view, right? It's not, the person's not really waving, they're, they're saying, help. Um, now, you know, I feel like this poem is very relevant because, you know, I feel like to a certain extent, all of us probably can relate to this. We've all maybe had an experience where we really feel awful. We want help but people don't understand, right? They don't, they don't see what we're really trying to tell them. And that sometimes even people that we see on the outside, they look so happy, looks like they have everything, their life is so fulfilling and wonderful, but yet maybe the real story is they're struggling, they're suffering, right? And certainly if we think about like famous people, celebrities, right, actors, comedians, musicians, you know, I can name several that, that like just say the first name that pops into my mind, Robin Williams, right? A very famous comedian. Some of you might be familiar with, you know, some of his movies. There's so many of them. And he is a great comedian. He was always telling jokes. It seemed like he was just so happy, you know, but, but he committed suicide and it was so shocking. What? Robin Williams? You know, he was the life of the party, you know, and that's just one example of, you know, again, that the way people present themselves, especially now that we have social media today, you look at pe some people's social media and it just seems like, wow, they seem so happy. Their relationship seems so fulfilling. And then we, re we then we learn maybe, no, if the, you know, that's not really the case. And then the other thing that I really like about this poem is I appreciate Stevie Smith's use of imagery, right? So imagery, what does that word mean when we use it to talk about a poem, right? An image is a word or a sequence of words that appeals to our senses, right? So in this poem, right, she uses a lot of language that appeals to our senses, right? We have five senses, right? And so the, our sense of hearing, when she describes that dead man moaning, right? Moaning, you know, that like, I think that that when we think about a person moaning, often moaning in pain and agony, right? And the idea of hearing somebody moaning, I feel is very suggestive. And then also the, the sense of touch, Right. She refers to how the water is cold. Right. I'm a swimmer. So I know what that's like when you get into the ocean, say, and it's cold. It's freezing. It takes your body a couple moments to adjust and it's uncomfortable. Right. The whole time you're in that cold water, you just feel very unpleasant. Uh, and it really does make you feel, you know, just kind of like, ah, I got to hurry up and get out of this. And so that the reference to the cold. Um, and then just a reference to our vision, right? This idea of seeing a person gesturing, right? We might, you know, again, we've all probably seen people that we think are maybe like, hey, how's it going? But then again, like I said, we learn, no, that person's really struggling, right? So that image of somebody who's not waving, but actually drowning. So I feel like she does a very good job right? Telling this story, conveying this message through her images, right? The images certainly reinforce the theme, right? The theme, again, being um, miscommunication, right? The cold water, as well as the cold shoulder of the onlookers. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this poem. I look forward to reading your thoughts on the discussion board. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.